Hello, and welcome to the March installment of Construction Junction presented to you by MSU Infrastructure Planning and Facilities. If you have any comments or questions concerning this presentation, or have suggestions on how we might improve, please let us know via the feedback box on the Construction Junction webpage located at the address on the screen. We thank you in advance for helping us improve your experience. The agenda for the March presentation will begin with updates on which projects are going to the next two Board of Trustees meetings. Next will be an overview of the campus snow plan and information on cold weather water intrusion. There will then be a new project presentation on the replacement of induction units in Wells Hall. We will then have project updates on the Grand Rapids Research Facility, the Facility for Air Isotope Beams, 1855 Place, and the Breslin Student Event Center Facility Upgrades. Beginning with the April BOT meeting, the projects going to the board will be, for Step 2, Authorization to Proceed, Engineering Research Complex Addition and Renovation, and Wells Hall Induction Unit Replacement. And for Step 3, Bid and Contract Award, Parking Lot 92 Expansion and Reconstruction, Wharton Center Roof Replacement, and Trowbridge Road Repaving. Moving on to the June BOT meeting, the project going to the board will be, for Step 2, Authorization to Proceed, Wilson Road Extension. We begin this month's presentation with an overview of the campus snow plan. As we wrap up the 2017 winter season, it is important to remember that we many times have major snow events even in March and April, and so when conditions warrant, we ask that you practice good snow safety by giving yourself extra time to travel to work, driving carefully, dressing warmly, wearing sensible shoes with good traction, being extra aware of where you are walking and the condition of your path, shortening the length of your stride, and remembering to check the forecast before heading outside. For your safety, please remember to not dart out in front of or behind snow removal equipment. It is large, loud, and difficult to stop quickly, and make eye contact with snow removal equipment operators before crossing in front of them. The university uses a combination of brine and ice melt compound to combat icy conditions. Brine solution works by preventing adhesion of snow to hard surfaces, while ice melt is used on ice that is already formed. Often both are used in combination to speed the time it takes for melting compound to take effect. If you see any icy spots on campus, please call the campus operators at 353-1760 to report. Please remember that it does take time for ice melt compound to take effect. Here you can see the effect that preventative brining has on the ability of crews to cleanly remove snow and ice. The areas that were brined kept snow and ice from sticking to them, thus allowing complete removal unlike the areas that were not brined, which still retain some snow and ice even after snow removal equipment has passed. Again, an example of the preventative effect of brining ahead of a snow event. We ask that the campus community partner with IPF crews to help ensure everyone's safety by applying ice melt compound to areas outside of building entrances if they see slick spots. This helps avoid incidents until our crews have had a chance to clear the area. There are marked buckets of ice melt compound available at all entrances for this purpose. However, we also ask that you please be judicious with the use of ice melt in order to minimize the environmental impacts. Please do not park so close to sidewalks that your vehicle's bumper hangs over it. This makes clearing the sidewalk with our motorized equipment impossible. We also ask that you avoid parking in sections of lots that have not yet been cleared, either parking in already cleared areas or waiting for our crews to finish clearing the lot before parking. We remind everyone that parking is prohibited in residence hall loops from 2 to 6 a.m. Our crews have a formidable task ahead of them after a snow event, and keeping these areas free from vehicles helps removal efforts go more smoothly and quickly. Again, if you see icy or dangerous spots on campus, please call the campus operator at 353-1760. If you're not able to call, you can also tweet us at MSU Facilities. For more information about MSU snow removal plans, visit ipf.msu.edu. There you can find information on snow and ice removal services, as well as our environmentally green efforts. You can also email any feedback, suggestions, or comments to snowplan at ipf.msu.edu. We thank you for helping us keep MSU safe during the upcoming winter season. We next have information on cold weather water intrusions. With extreme cold temperatures, Plumbing and HVAC infrastructure can be vulnerable to freezing and breakage. Warmer temperatures do not mean the end of winter plumbing problems. Many issues do not present themselves until after the thaw has begun. As temperatures warm, the melting of snow and ice, along with spring rains, 
can also cause water intrusion into structures. It is imperative to report any water intrusion events as soon as possible to IPF at 353-1760, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. When calling to report a water intrusion event, the caller should have all pertinent information at hand, including the area affected and the source, extent, and characteristics of the intrusion. The campus operator will then notify the IPF first responder, who will assess the situation, contact the customer as necessary, and dispatch appropriate personnel to the area. Our goal is to stop the further intrusion of water, limit damage, provide the fastest service possible, and minimize the displacement of staff and disruption of work. Water intrusion events can affect more than just flooring. Other structural elements such as drywall and insulation can also be affected and must be remediated to avoid further complications. Again, if you witness any water intrusion event, please call IPF as soon as possible at 353-1760. We thank you for helping us keep MSU running 24-7-365. Moving on to new projects, we present the Wells Hall Replace Induction Units in Building Section C and D project. Wells Hall is located in the Central Academic District off Red Cedar Road. This project is necessary as the units were originally installed in 1967, have exceeded their useful life, and have become impossible to maintain. The goals of the project will include replacement of the aging induction heating and cooling units throughout the facility. Impacts to building occupants will include the inavailability of each faculty office in the C-Wing for a two to five day period. Actual dates will be coordinated between the department staff and contractor. The project is scheduled to begin in early May and will conclude at a time yet to be determined. The aerial view of the Wells Hall complex shows the work areas in section C and D highlighted in yellow. If you would like further information about this or any other project, visit the construction.msu.edu webpage. There you will find links to all current and past projects. Specific questions regarding the Wells Hall Induction Unit Replacement Project can be directed to the construction representative, Todd Wilson. We begin this month's project updates with the Grand Rapids Real Estate and Research Facility Development Project. This project is located in the heart of Grand Rapids in the area known as the Medical Mile. As indicated before, this is an off-campus project being completed in the City of Grand Rapids in the North Monroe neighborhood as part of the Medical Mile area. This site was chosen because of its proximity to the downtown area as well as other medical and research facilities. This building will be the cornerstone of the North Monroe neighborhood redevelopment and river restoration projects. Construction on this project began in June of 2015 with substantial completion scheduled for this September and ready for occupancy sometime by the end of the year. Here you see progress on the site beginning in November of 2015 with completion of the steelwork and progressing to February of this year. A map of the project site shows the location of surface parking construction which will begin shortly and the plaza area which will be completed sometime in April. Here is an aerial view rendering of the plaza. It is worth noting that as part of the North Monroe neighborhood redevelopment, there are plans to build restaurant and mixed use space directly across Monroe Avenue from the building. Here you see progress being made on the entry plaza and terrace area at the corner of Michigan Street and Monroe Avenue. A view from the southwest shows the southern elevation precast columns as well as the glass fronted atrium area. Inside of the atrium, you get a sense of the openness of the space and the effective use of natural lighting. A view of the typical lab bench setups on the second floor, as well as the fume hood spaces on that floor. For those of you who would like to follow the progress of construction on this project, please check out the live webcam site at the address on the screen. There you'll be able to see past and present views of the site. If you would like further information about this or any other project, visit the construction.msu.edu webpage. There you will find links to all current and past projects. Specific questions regarding the Grand Rapids Real Estate and Research Facility Development Project can be directed to the design representative, Dick Temple, the construction manager, Chad Webster with Clark Rockford Construction, or the project representative, Mike Morgan. 
Next, we have an update on the Facility for Air Isotope Beams project. The FREB facility is located in the Central Academic District at the intersection of Wilson Road and Bogue Street. Traffic and pedestrian routing plans for the next year include restriping and turnover of one westbound and two eastbound lanes of Wilson Road, moving site fencing to the south, and opening of the bike path. By July of 2018, all four lanes of Wilson Road will be reopened. Here we have a rendered perspective from the southwest of the completed facility, another rendering of the completed building from the southeast, and yet another rendering of the structure, this time from the northeast. Here you see an artist rendering of the aerial view of the completed structure, and here we have an actual aerial view of the FRIB project site. Here is a view of the LINAC tunnel, looking west, showing the installed cryogenic lines. And here we have a shot of the compressor room, showing the installed helium compressors. And a view of the mezzanine area in the coal box room. If you would like further information about this or any other project, visit the construction.msu.edu webpage. There you'll find links to all current and past projects. Specific questions regarding the facility for rare isotope bees project can be directed to the project representative, Brad Bull. We next have an update on the 1855 Place project. This project is located in the Northwest Residential Mixed-Use Districts at the former site of the Michigan State Police Post. The goals of this project include creating a living environment that supports both single students and student families around the resources they need to be academically successful, creating an institutional asset to further our world-class land-grant mission, consolidating office spaces from across campus, freeing up space for academic programs while saving resources and improving communication, and creating synergies between residential and hospitality services and intercollegiate athletics. The scope of the project includes a 102,000 square foot mixed-use office building that will be LEED Silver Certified, which will include RHS offices, intercollegiate athletic offices, as well as retail space. Creation of 438,000 square feet of student apartments, both single student apartments as well as family housing apartments, creation of 2,075 parking spaces, including a parking deck, to accommodate students, staff, and campus events. Funding sources for this project will come from auxiliary funds, from RHS, intercollegiate athletics, and parking fees. Construction on this project commenced in the summer of 2015. The new parking ramp opened in April of 2016. The family housing units were ready for occupancy last August. The single student housing units are expected to be open sometime in August of this year, as well as the various retail spaces in the new mixed-use tower. The office tower, hall of champions, and the housing assignment office should be ready for occupancy sometime this October. The site as it existed prior to the start of construction shows the location of University Village, the location of event parking which has been relocated to the south, as well as the three structures that have been demolished or relocated. The site development includes building of new family housing, single student apartments, retail and office space, and a new parking deck and surface lot. This project is being completed in two phases in order to minimize disruptions and to maintain event parking availability during the entirety of the project. Phase one included demolition of the existing police post buildings and the theater department scene shop. Phase one also included the construction of the parking ramp and surface lot, as well as the construction of three family housing units. During Phase 1 construction, a temporary construction access road was installed to the west of the site. Phase 2 of the project includes construction of the single student apartment buildings, as well as the office and retail towers. During this phase, event parking has been moved to the newly constructed parking deck and surface lot. Here you see an aerial view rendering of the project site showing the location of the new parking ramp, the office and retail towers, single student apartment buildings, the existing university village structures, and the new family housing units. Here's a rendering of the completed office tower showing the intercollegiate athletic office space on the top floor, and a rendering of the completed mixed-use tower, this time from the corner of Harrison and Kalamazoo. A view from the southwest of the office tower portion of the mixed-use building showing exterior masonry work progressing, and a view farther north showing delivery of construction materials to the inside of the facility. Framing work continues on the retail areas of the facility, as well as in the office portion of the building. 
a shot of some of the decorative brickwork being installed. Work on the single student end caps continues, with work progressing on the interior of these structures. The end caps will house common areas for residents, including mailboxes and fitness facilities. For those of you who would like to follow progress of construction on this project, please check out the live webcam site at the address on the screen. If you would like further information about this or any other project, visit the construction.msu.edu webpage. There you will find links to all current and past projects. Specific questions regarding the 1855 Place project can be directed to the project representative, Andy Linebaugh. Lastly, we have an update on the work that is being done as part of the Breslin Student Event Center Facility Upgrades Project. The Breslin Center is located in the Athletic and Recreation District. The university is undertaking this project in order to enhance the student, alumni, fan, and public experience by improving the functionality of the event center. To create a lasting legacy by integrating a sense of Spartan tradition throughout the facility and to extend the useful life of the building by improving services to the fans and implementing major maintenance items. The project is being divided into two phases, facility upgrades and athletics addition. The phases have been designed in a way that minimizes rework and are being fully coordinated throughout their design and construction. Phase 1 included a 22,000 square foot addition around the building, an expanded concourse, renovation and upgrading of the restroom facilities, renovation of concession stands, improvements to the entry vestibules to the main concourse, improvements to finish levels and experience on the concourse, improvements to site conditions for ingress and egress, improvements to site security, replacement of the chiller system, and connection to the East Lansing water system. Phase 2 includes a 30,000 square foot addition, which will create a sense of main entry and destination into the building and includes a basketball hall of history. Construction on this project began in January of 2016 and is expected to be complete by August of this year. Here you see the floor plan of the completed facility upgrades showing the expansion of the concourse area, the new restroom and concession areas, and the new hall of history. As part of the Breslin upgrade, there are also changes being made to the area surrounding the center. A new plaza outside of the Hall of History is planned, with a Magic Johnson statue being slightly relocated to accommodate the new addition. There will also be improvements to adjacent parking and loading areas, as well as a new crosswalk across Harrison Road to the newly constructed parking ramp. Here is a graphic showing the work that is ongoing during the first part of March, highlighting the areas of the worksite that are still in construction, as well as the areas that are complete and in operation and a graphic showing the work that is planned for the period from late March to early May, highlighting those areas of the worksite that are still in construction, as well as the areas that are complete and in operation. Here you see an artist rendering of the Hall of History Plaza, which will include the relocated Magic Johnson statue. Here is a progress photo of the exterior of the Hall of History. Work continues on the southeast concourse and restroom areas, as well as the Hall of History addition a view of the new ticket office location. New chillers have been installed in the facility to provide additional and improved cooling. Work progresses on the interior of the Hall of History addition, as well as in the new entrance area to the hall. For those of you who would like to follow the progress of construction on this project, please check out the live webcam site at the address on the screen. If you would like further information about this or any other project, visit the construction.msu.edu webpage. There you will find links to all current and past projects. Specific questions regarding the Breslin Center Facility Upgrades project can be directed to the construction representative, Jason Van Zee. This concludes the March Construction Junction presentation. We encourage you to visit the Infrastructure Planning and Facilities website at www.ipf.msu.edu. There you will find information on construction and maintenance alerts, detour information, construction junction information, project and contact information. There are also a number of other IPF resources available, including listservs that you can subscribe to to keep up to date with various IPF projects and events. Stay connected with IPF via social media. Follow us on Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Watch our videos on YouTube. And follow us on Instagram. Construction Junction presentations will be made available on the CJ website beginning the 7th of each month. We thank you for taking the time to check us out, and we hope you'll visit us again soon.